This is Elizabeth Davis with the League of Women Voters of Portland, and you're watching the Video Voters Guide. We, in conjunction with Metro East Community Media, are here to interview candidates running in the May 2020 primary election. With me today is Jazz Davis. Welcome, Jazz. Thanks. Nice to be here with you. Great. Well, let's uh, dive right in with the first question. Please tell us a little about yourself, why you're running for this office, what your unique characteristics uh, are that set you apart from the other candidates. Sure. Uh, for starters, uh, I've lived in this region for a long time, my whole life, in fact, and uh, a lot of family that goes back here. My great grandfather is also a James, and he also went by Jazz. Um, and so I have a real affinity uh, and sense of connection to this place. Uh, I'm a parent of two amazing kids. They're both teenagers now. And uh, um, they're usually go, 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 except for, of course, now in this pandemic, they're, they're just stay, stay, stay. <laughs> so um, we're getting a lot of good family time together, and I'm actually enjoying that. That's maybe one of the silver linings of this uh, terrible time. Uh, I've also I've, I've been a community organizer for over 30 years, uh, and uh, I'm a small business owner. I own a wellness center near uh, 12th and Belmont called Awakenings Wellness Center, um, and I'm a board member of the Equal Vote Coalition, which is a, a voting reform uh, organization committed to making sure that everybody's vote is uh, counted equally and weighted equally in our elections. Um, I'm a big advocate of strengthening, uh, protecting and strengthening democracy. So. Okay. Um, so this next question is related to COVID-19. The COVID-19 pandemic and resulting devastation to small business, city employee layoffs and house housing displacement will be with us for some time. How would you seek to address the fallout, including the reduction in city revenue? That's a great question and, and one that a lot of us are wrestling with right now, uh, not only in terms of the city, but also in terms of our own businesses. I have had to shut my business um, uh, and uh, I have a lot of therapists that I um, lease space to and I've cut all everybody's rents down to in zero in quite a few cases. Um, and I think it's going to be some combination of community pulling together and helping each other out in terms of how we get through this as a community. Um, something similar to what I'm doing in my own uh, business, we're gonna be having to do citywide where neighbors are helping each other. Uh, but in terms of city revenues and what we're doing uh, for the city, uh, I think it's gonna come down to getting really creative and with, our, with our budgeting. Uh, I, I'm not interested in seeing us do mass layoffs. I think that just further destabilizes the economy. I'd much rather look at um, cutting back hours uh, across the board and, and keeping as many people employed as possible and even keeping their benefits of full-time kind of benefits while we go to um, partial hours. And uh, there are other things that we're gonna have to do, including potentially uh, borrowing which uh, is something that's uh, I'm not in favor of doing if we can avoid it, but, uh, but we probably will have to in this case. And it's something I, I wish we had a public bank, which is one of the, my platform positions is we need a public bank to give us more um, resilience in our own economy and keep more control over our own money um, and keep our, our money in the system, the local economy working for us rather than sending so much uh, interest out of state to, to uh, big banks, you know. Um, so uh, that's one of the things I'd like to see us do is actually um, petition the legislature immediately, uh, first petition the governor to uh, hold an emergency session of the legislature um, as early as August, and then petition that emergency session for uh, the authority, enabling authority to create our own public bank so that we can begin to get a bigger, uh, a better grasp on our own money and keeping it local and working for us. So there's, there's several ideas uh, and, and there'll be a lot of other creative thinking that goes into resolving this, uh, kind of addressing this crisis. So those are the, the ones I'm starting with. Okay, great, thanks. Uh, so the next question, 
So if we were to maintain our current governance government structure, what city bureau would you want to oversee and why? Definitely parks. And it's because parks actually intersects with um, several of the interests that, that I have in terms of um, working with uh, the houseless population. Currently, uh, the parks employees are often first line of connect, you know, um, interaction with homeless people. And uh, I think there's opportunities for um, connecting with and helping find, create more stability for houseless, houseless community um, through parks, but also uh, parks, I, I'm interested in parks because it gives me a chance to work on um, another key area of my uh, platform and my priorities, which is uh, creating more uh, food stability in our region and food resilience. And we're already seeing um, the impact of this particular pandemic on uh, food systems globally. And uh, I think it's important that we become less uh, reliant on outside food sources in the future, that we have uh, more food stability locally and more food resilience locally. And we can do a lot of education around food, food um, growing, gardening, urban farming, food uh, preservation, uh, putting up a lot of food, food sharing, and, um, and food preparation. And a lot of that education can happen through our community centers, and a lot of the uh, education can happen right on parks properties in the form of additional um, uh, gardening, like community gardening spaces. So uh, I see parks as, uh, and, and our community centers as an integral part of um, creating a more resilient Portland. And that's one of the things that I came into this uh, race uh, advocating for is getting more resilient so that we can be addressing the impacts of uh, climate change and peak oil, which are now with us and will continue to be with us for the rest of our lives. It's, it's ironic that I, I came into the race and then, uh, you know, uh, I'm within a month, uh, you know, I came to the race saying we need to prepare for crisis. We need to be ready and, to, and we need to be more resilient as a people in a city. And then within a month, uh, everything that I've been advocating is borne out. It's like, yes, these are important issues. It hasn't changed my positions at all. Um, it just strengthened and reinforced the, the very reasons why I'm running. So. Great, thank you for that answer. So the next question is, how would you address the public significant concerns about police slash community relations, use of deadly force and officer accountability? Those concerns are um, need to be addressed and and I am definitely in favor of having a very open public, uh, tr yeah, transparent and, and public participation in the upcoming uh, contracting process uh, for uh, our police, because uh, we're about to create a new union contract. And I think that public involvement is gonna be key to creating a better contract uh, going into the future. I am committed to um, supporting independent police review uh, and giving that uh, police review authority to compel officer testimony and to recommend uh, disciplinary actions. Um, I, I want them to be able to consider deadly force incidents. Uh, I actually do believe it should be easier to dismiss officers uh, that we find are not behaving uh, up to the standards of what we would expect our police to how behave, be behaving in the city of Portland. Um, and I'd like to see an increase in transparency of our, our record keeping. And um, I think that that's also an important part of, um, so that we're able to track better incidences over time. Okay, great. Well, that's all the time we've got. Um, really appreciate you talking with us. So this has been the Video Voters Guide. Thank you for watching. The primary election is Tuesday, May 19th. Be sure to inform yourself about voters and the ballot measure and exercise your right to vote.